Hi folks, back with Ancient Cosmography. Um, well, I'm starting my next book. I got like a few pages here. Um, but let's see. Oh, well, I should get this all out of the way. This is all the stuff about the Antipodes and how um, how basically the Columbus's contemporaries all knew that America existed before he went there. It was called the Antipodes. It was called the Hesperides, Hades, Hell, Ogigia. Amantet, uh, div, or what is, I forget what the, uh, dive maybe, or I forget what the Romans call it, uh, called it, uh, Sumerians called it Kur. All right, all this crap is not supposed to be here. Well, this is all for my book, so, but, um, if I can get this out of the way somehow. Not very possible. Alright, so <laughs> fuck. Um don't think I need this, but it's probably not. Oh yeah, it will let me delete it. The great old boar, his bristles stiff on the end. The Bris these bristles sharper than a pointed spear. I'm going to read this tomorrow in the cafe, pointing to the parts of Australia and Papua that it's referencing. Um, uh, the bard... The author is Fergus the Bard. Tell us now, Fergus, Bard of Aaron's fane, how did fare the night, the day in Gaur's furious night? Not good, son of Cumhal or what? Cumhal. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I think it's like Kual or I don't know. The tidings from Gaur's fight, dear Oscar lives no more. He who bravely fought. Coalt's seven sons are gone with the commons of Alvin's fane. See, I think Alvin might be the same as Morv Morvin. Um, basically, it might refer to Northwest Scotland because I think they sometimes refer to Finn of Alvin. Might be an archaic name for Northwest Scotland. So it says Aaron's fiend, that means Ireland's fiend. The fane, the Fenian giants that are probably seem to be avatars of the land, peninsulas and islands and stuff. The youth of the fane have fallen, all in their warlike robes. Macluy too is dead with six of thy father's sons. Fallen are the youth of Alvin, dead are the fane of Britain. So it could be that Alvin is Britain, that that's another name for Britain. Lachlan's king's son is dead. Lachlan could even be Lachlan, like there's a loch, a lake called Lachlan in uh, Western Scotland between like Argyle and uh, uh, Mall and Skye and stuff. Morvan, Morvern. Uh, who came to give us aid? He of the manly heart and arm at time at all times strong. Tell them now, O bard, my son, son, my delight. <laughs> so I think all the giants have to die in the story because that's why the land is like not moving all the time because it's made out of these giants. But yeah, so I think that could be the origin because in. Uh, you know, Mc, James McPherson, he referred to Finn McCool as being the king of Morven, and which is like northwest Scotland, 
or in Northwest Scotland and maybe represented the whole of Northwest Scotland because he said he was also king of Northwest Scotland. So Alvin could be a, just another name for that. Um, I'm not sure where this where this poem is from exactly. It might be from the Book of Lismore. Uh, so here it is in Gaelic. This is talking about the Finarian. Alban is Arian. So it shows that when they say British, they in Gaelic they say Albane, which is actually Latin for white, whereas Finn, Fion, is Gaelic for white. So it might still bolster the idea that, uh, you know, Finn McCool is part of Britain being Northwest Scotland. Um, but so I think these songs rhyme. Do Rinius Bwad Trath Do Rinius Fograd Ulam. Yeah, I mean, it does seem, it certainly repeats stuff. There's Ulam and Ulam, Aaron and Aaron. Uh, but yeah, probably Fidu Richardin and Timur Do Isan. I think it does kind of rhyme, maybe not completely, but I think it at least almost rhymes and sometimes does rhyme. Maybe it rhymes completely. I don't really know how to pronounce this shit. Um, magical love spots. Um, Okay, so the boar was a steward's son in the form of a boar. The boar seems to be Australia. <clears throat> Diarmu was famous for his beauty and his love spot, which I think which made him irresistible to women. While hunting one night, he met a woman who was the personification of youth. After sleeping with him, she put a magical love spot under his eye that caused any woman who looked at it to fall in love with him. So I think that the love spot is either his dick, which is an, under his eye, or it's actually the cum that's coming out of his dick. Because he, if he's Papua in the same sort of avatar as the Lesko famous scene of Papua as a bird man, and he is a bird man. He's described as like blue-eyed hawk or whatever. Then Papua Peninsula is his, is his huge wang. And there's basically islands and reefs off it that look like him coming. So that would make sense if he met a woman, slept with her, and she gave him that under his eye. So his eye could actually be his, you know, his... Uh, penis hole, his urethra or whatever you call it. Um, that's my guess. And so that's why, you know, all these women love him immediately because of his lovely form. And then that's why Finn McCool was like, killed him because he was hella jealous. One freezing winter's night, a loathly lady entered the Fiona Lodge where the warriors had just gone to bed after a hunting expedition. Drenched to the bone, her sodden hair was gnarled and knotted. She knelt beside each warrior and demanded a blanket, beginning with Fionn, only young Diarmid, whose bed was nearest to the fireplace, took pity on the woman, giving her his bed and blanket. So I think this could be, she could, might be Borneo, which is near Papua somewhat, and, um, and parts of which are slightly similarly shaped. And that because where it says Diarmid, whose bed was nearest to the fireplace, that could relate to the fact that the equator runs 
right alongside Papua. Like Papua's head, it just, like just almost grazes Papua, like runs along the length of it doesn't actually overlap so it's like he's closest to the fire he's not on the fire but for not being on the fire if the fire is the equator he's the closest you could be basically um she noticed diarman's love spot uh and said that she had wandered the world alone for seven years diarman told her she could sleep all night and he would protect her she became a beautiful young woman okay so i'm not sure exactly what that is something cosmological probably um diarman you do irish pronunciation dear I don't fucking know. Also, it's like, why don't they write it so people can understand the phonetics? They just put all these weird, like, symbols and shit, and it's like, what? Also known as Diarmid of the Love Spot. <laughs> Diarmid of the Cum Stain. Was a hero and demigod, son of Dawn, and one of the Fianna of the, in the cycle Fenian cycle of Irish mythology he is best known as the lover of grain grain I don't know an intended the intended wife of Fianna leader Fionn McCumhail in the legend the pursuit of Diarmid and grain among his sons were Don Chad Lolan Ruchlad and Lorad okay and let's see, those could be like peninsulas on him or something, or islands around him. In the legend, the Tuatha de Danann god of love and creativity, Angus Og, was Diarmid's father, foster father and protector. According to the story, Diarmid was a skilled warrior and a well-liked and valued member of the Fianna who single-handedly killed 3,400 warriors. Um, these battles are like cosmological i'm not sure entirely what they symbolize but i do not think they at all symbolize humans fighting each other okay so this shows aboriginal <clears throat> song lines and it shows how they basically cover all of australia so these are similar type of stories poems like the irish ones and the irish ones Pro and Gaelic ones can be used, probably originally were used the same way to navigate because they're all about geography and somewhat astronomy. But the Aboriginals still know how, they still understand this system, whereas most of us Gaels, we don't understand, uh, we don't know how to read the, you know, the navig. I mean, I'm trying to figure out how to interpret the uh, old gaelic spells and whatever but uh, the aborigines like really have the full picture so they can navigate anywhere in like the most inhospitable deserts there just um just by singing a song oh awesome freaking deleted all my pictures Yeah, reopen. Fuck. This is a Campbell chief. The Campbells are supposed to be descended from Diarmid Macodun. He was the chief that created liberalism, you know, created modern, uh, you know, Whiggery leftism kind of in the 1630s. Um. Okay, well, this is the ancient Egyptian map of America and Greenlands and whatnot. 5,500 years ago. Okay, so this shows how uh, when Diarmid dies, he. Let's see, so this is him. This is Diarmid, this is the Boar, Australia, Cape York. This is 
seemingly the earliest depiction of Australia, 45,000 years old, from Sulawesi nearby as a boar. And this is seemingly the uh, one of the earliest depictions of Papua from the famous scene at Lascaux as a birdman. So, so this is the cum, cum stain of, that he ha got, it appeared once a woman uh, spent a night in his bed. And somehow women love him because of it, because they want that, those good cummies, I guess. Here's the, uh, the boar's, um, what's it called? Tusk. The boar's mane with its dangerous bristles. It's all about teaching the sailors how to avoid those bristles so they don't run aground. So, like, you know, in these comparisons, in every comparison I've done of Australia or Papua or Busuanga or whatever, I've shown, like, virtually hundreds of points of connection, you know, if you overlay them, points of similarity. The, the official view, which is that this scene is simply celest is celestial and shows some kind of stars, which could be true at the same time, but all they have is literally those three points, which is cool, but it's like compared to mine, it's nothing, you know, compared to, um, compared to, well, yeah, anyway, can't find my things. Like, I mean, even just this, right? So water drunk from Fionn's hands had the power of healing, but when Fionn, or I'll just call him Finn, gathered water, he twice let it run through his fingers before he could bring it to Diarmid. So he is just trolling Diarmid. Threatened by his son Ocean and grandson Oscar, he fetched water a third time, but this time he was too late. Diarmid had died. So I think the first two times when he's just trolling him, it's this and this, because there's all these little islands and reefs that look like water that's pouring out from these clasped hands. Whereas the third time, I think it's this one, where there isn't water coming out as much but then he's dead and i think partly he's dead because this has now become a hand instead of originally it was part of his nose but when he's dead um then that's then he's just like a skeleton you know when you don't have the fleshy part of your nose there's just like the aperture in the skull so I think that's a double entendre there, because to me this, you know, this is it, uh, the actual mainland without this, these islands. And it does kind of look like a skull without the nose. Um, and Bird's Head Peninsula. This one is also called Bird's Beak Peninsula, and this one is also called uh, Bird's Neck Isthmus. So, like, just the chances that all this these things would line up, just like in the story, that right near his face there would be some stuff that looks actually like this, like hands with water falling through them, just by chance? No. It's like, whereas they just have these three points of commonality. Um... I have like a million. There's a zoom in on our beautiful uh, giant here. This, with, here's the last hand of Fionn trying to feed him the life giving water, but he's already dead because Finn trolled him for too long. Um, let's see. This just shows how. Like the thing, the Finn McCool avatar where Sky is his head and his hand and thumb are the small isles. You can actually see the, uh, even the thumb from this far out. Even, you know, here you can see Canada, you can see Greenland, Iceland, 
it's Ireland, Britain. So that's how important, you know, how prominent these little features are that you can still see it even this far out. Pretty far out. All right, I think my phone's about to cut me off, but see, this shows how the Egyptians knew the Earth is round and that it has opposite gravity on each hand. Uh, side, you know, because these are like upside down figures on this side. There's like an upside down sphinx. This, she just represents the sky. That's Newt. But this is the earth and, or maybe this specifically is the earth. Something like that. That's like, you know, 3,000, 4,000 years old, probably. And... Tribal elders in Australian Aboriginal societies are accorded a great deal of respect.